Hello students, welcome back. This is module 1.2.6. Uh, this is going to be about carbohydrates, one of the major categories of biological macromolecules. You'll recall last time that we talked about the four categories of biological macromolecules, including carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. And today we do address uh, carbohydrates. Now the name carbohydrate, hydrate of carbon, uh, speaks to the fact that there is, for every carbon in these, there is one water molecule on average. And if you look carefully at the chemical formulas of some of the carbohydrates, for example, glucose, whose chemical formula is C6H12O6, you'll see that indeed that it is hydrated carbon, and that's where they get their names. Now, carbohydrates, we're going to break them down into three major types, monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. First, let us discuss monosaccharides. The name itself, if we look at the etymology, mono means one and saccharide means sugar. So it means one sugar. This is taken to mean simple sugar. It is also noteworthy that when we speak of carbohydrate uh, polymers, that the monomers out of which they are made are all monosaccharides. They belong to this category. Uh, and so these are the sugars that consist of one molecule. And the most important example, and one that I will ask you to remember, is glucose. Uh, in fact, glucose is pretty much the universal fuel used by cells in most life forms. Uh, and that's the one who I spoke of previously, whose chemical formula is C6H12O6. Um, the second category of carbohydrates are disaccharides, and di means two, and saccharides still mean sugar, so these are double sugars, and they consist of two monosaccharides bonded together. One example is sucrose. Sucrose is table sugar, uh, either beet sugar or cane sugar, uh, you know, CNH sugar that's uh, on your kitchen table, and each sucrose uh, disaccharide sugar is made out of two monosaccharides, or two simple sugars, glucose and fructose. We're not going to spend much more time talking about monosaccharides and disaccharides. Rather, the majority of our time on carbohydrates are going to be, is going to be spent uh, looking at polysaccharides. Poly means many, and so these are many sugars, are simply known as complex sugars. So these are sugars that have many monomers linked together, or many uh, monosaccharide monomers linked together uh, to form a long chain of, of sorts. Um, this slide shows us the four examples of polysaccharides that we're going to focus on in our discussion today and, and these are presented according to their functionality. Uh, here we have the energy storage uh, polysaccharides and there are two of those. One is glycogen and this is a, a molecule, a polysaccharide that stores energy in animals and is made of glucose monomers. Uh, a second energy storage polysaccharide is starch, and starch stores energy in plants. It too is made out of glucose monomers, so I hope you're beginning to see why I emphasize the importance of glucose. Uh, a second category of polysaccharides are structural polysaccharides. Um, cellulose is a structural polysaccharide found in plants. It is made of glucose monomers. And uh, the fourth and final polysaccharide we're going to consider here is chitin. Uh, this is a structural molecule found in animals. It's made of uh, monomers that are modified glucoses. They have a, a nitrogen group tacked on. And so we're, we're, rather than learning the technical name, we're simply going to call them uh, modified glucose uh, monomers, something like that. Um, we're now going to consider these four, but not in the same order that they appear on this slide. Uh, the first one that we're going to consider, the first polysaccharide, was starch. Now, starch is an energy storage molecule in plants. Many of you, if I ask you, where do you find starch, you would say, oh, in potatoes or in bread or in pasta. And all, the, all of those would be correct answers. Uh, indeed, starch is very widespread, and it is where plants uh, store the energy that they convert uh, into sugar from photosynthesis. And so, of course, starch is made out of sugar 
monomers. Uh, and and in the, of course, the specific monomers are glucose monomers. And starch consists of many long, straight chains. And remember the metabolism of these molecules. When we say metabolism, that just means these molecules being broken down inside the cells or body of a living organism. It, uh, this process occurs only on the ends of the molecule. So having many straight chains means that it can occur on the end there of each of those chains. Um, and, and so starch is a uh, molecule that many organisms uh, have the enzymes to allow them to break it down. So it is widely utilized by living things as a food source. Uh, a second uh, polysaccharide uh, that we're going to consider is cellulose. Cellulose, like starch, is also found in plants, but cellulose has a very different function. Uh, cellulose is a structural molecule. Uh, we find cellulose in the cell walls of plants, and cellulose is a major constituent of wood. Uh, and, of course, cellulose also is a polymer, and it is made of glucose monomers. Uh, it's made of many long, straight chains. Uh, but the thing about cellulose is the, the bond between the uh, glucose monomers is slightly different, and therefore very few organisms have an enzyme that allow them to digest cellulose. And one of the things you'll notice in the naming of sugars is O-S-E is a common suffix in the sugars. Now, as it turns out, uh, enzymes have the suffix A-S-E. So the enzyme to break down the sugar cellulose is cellulase. And very few organisms have this enzyme cellulase. And so very few can metabol metabolize cellulose. And because plants are so widespread and cellulose is such a common molecule in plants, it turns out that cellulose is the most abundant biological macromolecule. And human beings don't have the ability to break down cellulose, uh, but cellulose is still an important part of our diet. It is a source of dietary fiber, and fiber uh, is, can be critically important. Here is an illustration that shows both uh, starch and cellulose. Uh, and again, the, the difference between the two is a technical one in terms of the chemical bond that we're not going to explore. Uh, but we'll simply say that starch it has a, the long straight chains and many organisms are able to metabolize it. Uh, glucose, I'm sorry, uh, cellulose made from glucose is long straight chains, but very few organisms can metabolize the kind of bond that is found there. Um, just as an example, we can consider, if, if I ask you what kind of animal, what kind of organisms are able to digest cellulose, and you go, okay, cellu uh, wood is made of cellulose, so what can digest wood? Uh, many students answer that a, a termite can. And as it turns out, that termites do digest cellulose in an indirect way. Uh, they can't digest the cellulose, the main component of wood, because they lack the enzyme cellulase. However, they have an organism called trichonympha. Uh, it's an organism that lives inside the guts of the termites. And the, it's the trichonympha, the, the, these little one-celled organisms, that produce the cellulase for the termites. Um, it's very interesting. The trichonympha gets nutrition and shelter inside the gut of the termite. The termite is able to eat and receive uh, nutrients from cellulose. And so one of the questions that might come to your mind is, well, when a termite hatches from an egg, does it already have these uh, little mutualistic symbionts living in his gut? And the answer is no. Uh, termites uh, practice what is called uh, mutual feeding. So a baby termite will come up to an adult termite and wiggle its antenna, and the adult termite will blah, barf out the contents of its stomach and the young termite will gobble it up and in the process uh, it will get the required trichonympha uh, mutualis in the gut. But you can actually take a termite and remove its head and legs, uh, put it on a slide, um, squish it, 
with a drop of water, zoom in, that's kind of messy, but if you zoom in very carefully, you'll be able to see the little trichonympha uh, symbionts that live there and allow termites to be able to digest uh, cellulose. A uh, third category of polysaccharides uh, is glycogen. Glycogen is an energy storage molecule in animals. In this case, it is in a specific group of animals, in vertebrates, animals with backbones. And within vertebrates, glycogen provides a fuel for the fight or flight response. I'm sure many of you have heard of the fight or flight response. Uh, it is elicited uh, when you're very scared or very angry. And of course, it is under the control of the immediate short term control of uh, adrenaline. Uh, glycogen is produced in the vertebrate liver. So it's one of the important functions of your liver. Your liver is kind of the metabolic thermostat for the body. It determines whether or not sugar in your bloodstream is metabolized or whether or not it's used to make fat or used to make glycogen in this case. In any case, uh, glycogen is a polymer of glucose monomers. Once again, glucose uh, is there. And many organisms can digest uh, or metabolize glycogen. Uh, and glycogen is uh, made of many highly branching chains. And here, each of the chains of glycogen is surrounded by a layer of water. Sometimes we just call it a shell of water, but this layer of water makes glycogen quite heavy. And if you look down on the bottom at the, uh, of this slide, you can see that these are the branches of the glycogen molecule, and they would each branch would be surrounded by a layer of water, and so it makes glycogen quite heavy. And this is one of the reasons that all animals, uh, all vertebrate animals, don't store glycogen because it can make, be metabolized very quickly, but it's quite heavy. And so glycogen is suitable then as an emergency fuel source. Uh, it, because it has all these different ends, form follows function, really function follows form, uh, it allows this molecule to be uh, metabolized very quickly for that fight or flight response. I already told you it's surrounded by water, but I do want, here on the last bolded point on this slide, I want you to notice that uh, it's something that I call the dieter's dilemma. Uh, when you go on a diet, you reduce your caloric intake, and uh, your body will release the glycogen that it has inside it, and with it, it releases the water. And so you step on the scale after a day or two of uh, dieting, and boy, you've lost three pounds, and you get out your calculator and figure out, if I lose three pounds every two days, you're going to lose 20 pounds in no time at all. Uh, but in point of fact, what happens is the next day or two, your body recognizes that it has released its energy it's emergency energy source, and it says, oh, I better replace that in case there's an emergency. And so the, the weight that you lost, the glycogen and the uh, water layers, is replaced. And so often dieters, after one or two days, they get excited about losing weight, and then after the third or fourth day, when they look, they, uh, they weigh themselves, they find that the weight is bad. So this is what we call the dieter's uh, dilemma. And so it's important that you would be able to understand that uh, for your own life, if nothing else. Okay, the fourth and final polysaccharide that we're going to discuss is chitin. Chitin is a structural molecule, and it's found in two major groups of organisms. Just uh, Chitin is found in the cell walls of fungi, that is mushrooms and other fungi have chitin in the cell walls, uh, just like uh, plants have cellulose in their cell walls. And the other place where chitin is found is it's found in some animals. For example, it's found in the exoskeletons of arthropods. Arthropods are animals like crayfish or other crustaceans, insects, and they have a hard skeleton that's on the outside of their body. And one of the major constituents of that exoskeleton, uh, or outside skeleton, is chitin. Chitin is made of modified glucose uh, monomers. They have a, an additional nitrogen group. And then the chains of chitin are cross-bonded with uh, protein-type bonds, peptide bonds, that make chitin very strong. It's very strong. Uh, it's made of these straight chains, uh, and it's, it has these cross-bonds on it. 
typically chitin is not metabolized by organisms. It's considered to be more or less indigestible. If we go down to the San Pedro River and we look at some raccoon scat, what is scat? Well, that's poop. It's what comes out of the south end of a northbound raccoon. Uh, we may find some of the exoskeletons of crayfish because crayfish are one of the favorite foods that raccoons like to eat, but they cannot digest the chitin. Here we see uh, an illustration showing a couple of mushrooms, showing, in this case, a marine crustacean. This looks like a spiny lobster. And this shows you the actual modification of the glucose uh, monomers, although we're not asking you to learn uh, this kind of detail. Uh, with that, that concludes the discussion on carbohydrates. You should be able to discuss the, any of these four major polysaccharides and understand what a monosaccharide and a disaccharide is. Uh, and with that, I'll sign off and we'll be back to discuss the next category a, little, a bit later.